Let's start with the tumors of nasopharynx. These are of two types, as we all know, benign and malignant. The most common type under benign is nasopharyngeal angiofibroma, whereas the most common type under the malignant is nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Now let's talk about nasopharyngeal angiofibroma which is also called as juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. So first let's see the etiology. The exact etiology is unknown however it is supposed to occur due to incomplete regression of first arch artery. This is predominantly seen in adolescents, males especially during the second decade hence the name juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. The proliferation of this tumor is supposed to be under the regulation of androgens as in this case testosterone hence this is testosterone dependent benign tumor so that is about etiology now let's move on to the origin the site of the origin is something that we all know about it is the sphenopilotine foramen which is around one centimeter posterior to the medial turbinate we already saw that in the previous video. We'll briefly talk about the pathology. It is evident from the name angiofibroma. Angio which means blood vessels, fibroma which means fibrous tissue. Hence this tumor has two components vascular and fibrous. However, there is a problem. Vascular tissue has no elastic or muscular coat in its ball. How is this even relevant? So in case of any severe bleeding, the bleeding cannot be controlled because there is no muscular coat and the second important point is every benign tumor is enclosed by a capsule however this is a ex this is an exception and this particular angiofibroma does not have a capsule so that's about the pathology next moving to the extensions let's first start with the medial extensions so it's very easy it extends into the nasopharynx the nasal cavity and the sinuses around let's next move to the lateral lateral extensions so before we see that what lies actually lateral to the spinopalatine foramen so that is the nasopharynx and that is a foramen so lateral to this foramen is the spinopalatine fossa let's um, see that this, let's see this fossa in another picture where we can actually see it clearly so that is the maxillary air sinus so the highlighted area is the posterior wall of the maxillary air sinus and above by the orbit and posteriorly by the pterygoid plate so that triangular area is our spinopalatine fossa so our tumor first starts entering into this fossa and slowly after a while it fills the fossa and after filling the fossa where does it go it moves more laterally so what lies more lateral to the sphenopalatine fossa as we can see here there is another fossa called the intratemporal fossa so from the sphenopalatine fossa the tumor moves into the intratemporal fossa which is more lateral so there we go intratemporal fossa So that is our posterior wall of maxillary sinus, above it is the orbit and posteriorly it is the pterygoid plate. So a tumor which is growing within this narrow space can cause pressure on all of the three directions. So let us see what happens if there is pressure on the posterior wall of maxillary sinus, it can be visualized in CT which is called the antral sign or Homan miller sign so what about the orbit the orbit gets pushed forward which is called the proptosis this occurs through the inferior orbital fissure so we are seeing two effects here one is antral sign and the other is proptosis so what about infratemporal fossa it lies right below the cheek so we are going to see a swelling below the cheek we'll see that in a photo in a short while 
and the third extension will be superior superior means obviously intracranial it is of two types limited or extensive it occurs either through cribriform plate or through middle cranial fossa either of them um, let us also talk about how the medial extension can be implicated it can cause nasal obstruction and epistaxis so here we are seeing all the extensions medial lateral and superior and their clinical implications so now let's see the clinical features which we all talked about till now so let's start with recurrent epistaxis because of medial extension and then nasal obstruction again because of medial extension so this results in denasal speech and the next one is otitis media so frequent infections can cause conductive hearing loss then proptosis and cheek swelling both of which are due to lateral extension these result in formation of frog face deformity as we can see in this picture very clearly there is a swelling of the cheek and the last one is involvement of nerves depending upon which fossa gets involved so we can do that and next moving on to the diagnosis so first let's see what we see as gross we see a mass in the nasopharynx which is sessile and which obstructs the nasopharynx and also one or more coena and this mass appears pink or purple in color the most important thing here is digital palpation is absolutely contraindicated because it is a vascular tumor and also biopsy should be avoided for the same reason because a vascular tumor can bleed very excessively next the ct so ct scanning is really important and here we use contrast enhancement ct scan because it is a vascular tumor and this helps in determining the extent of the tumor how far the tumor has spread and also we can visualize the antral sign here so here in this picture we are seeing this is the normal side and this whole highlighted section this is the tumor and as we can see this is the posterior wall of the maxillary sinus and it is anteriorly bent the other side is absolutely normal as you can see so we find anterior bowing of the posterior wall of maxillary sinus and this is called the antral sign and this is visualized on ct and we can also do mri and the next one is important that is the carotid angiography how is this important angiography helps us in understanding the vascularity of the tumor so the most commonly involved artery is the external carotid artery in case there is intracranial spread then internal carotid artery is also involved so which branch of external carotid artery is involved of course the maxillary artery so that's about the diagnosis we left a little part which is the staging of the tumor so here we see again this one so it's very simple this is the stage 1 medial extension nasopharynx is 1a nasal cavity is 1b and sinuses is 1c then moving on to the lateral that is stage 2 in case it enters it is 2a in case it fills the four sides 2b and in case it enters intratemporal four sides 2c then superiorly is obviously stage 3 limited is 3a and extensively is 3b so stage 1 a on a 1b 1c 2 2a 2b 2c and 3 3a 3b so those are the staging of this tumor and now coming to the last part that's the management treatment of choice is obviously surgical excision radiotherapy is not preferred as the patients are young so before any surgical intervention embolization should be done after an angiography so within 24 to 48 hours surgery must be performed and why is this done to reduce the blood flow to that particular area 
and to reduce bleeding during the surgery. In case there is medial spread or medial extension that is 1A, 1B, 1C, we go for transpalatal approach or endoscopy and if it is lateral that is 2A or 2B that is in the fossa, spinopalatal fossa, we go for lateral rhinotomy and medial maxillectomy and there is one more approach to this area which is called the transmaxillary leaf fort one approach or we go through endoscopy in case the tumor enters into infratemporal fossa that is 2c we go through extended lateral rhinotomy or maxillary swing approach or infratemporal fossa approach in case in case if there is superior extension that is 3a limitedly we go for extended lateral rhinotomy and we also go for combined intracranial and extracranial approach and the last one in case of extensive cranial intracranial involvement this is the only indication where radiotherapy is used because most of such tumor can be inaccessible for the surgical excision so once again let's see 1a 1b 1c that is nasal cavity nasopharynx sinuses we go for transpalatal or endoscopy 2a 2b that is spinopalatine fossa we go for lateral rhinotomy leaf fort approach or endoscopy and 2c that is infratemporal fossa we go maxillary for swing approach infratemporal fossa approach and in 3a combined intracranial and extracranial approach so that's lateral this is superior so the three of them so for radiotherapy we use 3000 to 3500 centigrade units and they are given in 15 to 18 fractions in about 3 to 3.5 weeks so that's about the management and angiofibroma as a whole